Okay, so when you open uh, your uh, CBCT, uh, you, when you put put the disc in, it should auto auto load or auto play. If that does not happen, then you can go to my computer and open uh, open the uh, CD and. From the CD, you have to click on the EXE file. This is the viewer file. Uh, this is the NNT viewer in this case. Double click on it. You will see two things. One is the 2D image and the 3D, which is the CBCT. Click on the 3D. And what loads are four windows, are four different ways of looking at the CBCT. This is the XL view. This is the coronal. This is the sagittal. And this is the three dimensional. Now, uh, uh, we have to first understand what coronal, axial, sagittal mean. Now, this is the uh, way you can change the coronal view. As you can see, this, this coronal view changes from here. So, if you, if you view the axial, in the axial here, you can see it comes from front to back. So, coronal means if you start from the front of the face, and go till the back with slices you get slices from front to back so and you can view it here as well this is the coronal view in slices from front gradually you are going towards the back now near the condylar region here so this is coronal the coronal view takes you from front to back the next is the axial view. Now the axial can be changed from here. As you can view in the coronal and the sagittal, the axial means from going from top of the head to, you can very well visualize here from top of the head to down so first comes the maxilla then the maxillary teeth then you come down then you view the mand mandible mandibular teeth then somewhere in this region if you now see the 3d image you are near the mental foramen region and you should see that this is the mental foramen here so you will be able to see the mental foramen in all, all the views in the 3D, in the sagittal, in the axial. Now the sagittal, the sagittal can, can be changed from here. Now we have to see the other two ways of looking at the image other than the sagittal to understand what sagittal actually is. Sagittal is from one side to the other if you view the axial view from the right side of the face going on till the left side so now you have to start deciding where you will be placing this horizontal line which is the axial plane and the red line the vertical line which is the coronal plane now the horizontal line can be moved like this now it, when you're moving it with your left left uh, mouse button you can notice on the left top corner that the it's it's basically moving the axial up and down and the same thing the along with that the coronal red line is also moving so it's moving the coronal plane as well now this blue line which is the horizontal line should always be kept parallel to the area where you are planning to place an implant suppose we are planning to place an implant in the mandible so keep this horizontal line parallel to the mandible like this
The next thing we need to do is create a panoramic uh, slice. So for that, go to multiplanar here and a new multiplanar. Now in the new multiplanar, go to freehand and basically start from one side in the posterior most portion of the mandible, the condyle, click once come ahead as soon as you have to change trajectory and angulation click again so come through the center click come again again when you have to change trajectory click once through the center of the mandible till the end of the condyle on the other side right click come out and store the image so once you double click and you come out, you get the exact panoramic view size that you asked for when you double clicked in the axial view. Now that this is ready, you can also make final changes by slightly modifying it. Here you can see the center line is exactly not on the center of the mandible. So basically you can slightly pull it towards the center. From here, get this line in the center, this line as well running through the center. And then you can save this. After this, what you do is you can see the panoramic image. This is slightly unclear. So we change the slice thickness to approximately 0.5 so you can type in 0.5 mm here and immediately you can see a change in the clarity of the image now in the panoramic view this red line which is there which is running through the center if you want to view exactly this area where the red line is running this is the sectional image that we have to that corresponds to this red line now if you want to see that image you double click on it and this is the image which you are seeing through which the red line is running currently now the important anatomical structures which we need to understand in the CBCT is first of all the mental foramen for the mental foramen both the horizontal and vertical lines you need to coincide at the mental foramen so the mental foramen is here exactly here the right vertical line and the horizontal line both both are intersecting at the mental foramen so you can see here in each slice you can see the mental foramen the red is that particular sectional slice which is 106 so in 106 you can see the mental foramen is slightly smaller in size gradually it's becoming bigger and then 109 slide you can see it's beginning so the inferior alveolar nerve anatomy is important uh, it's important to understand uh, and we should trace it out in uh, each mandible uh, to avoid placing an implant uh, through the nerve it the inferior alveolar nerve enters through the lingula runs initially lingually more comes anteriorly lingually till about the first molar and then swings across the mandible and comes out buccally through the mental foramen in uh, some percent uh, approximately i think 40 percent individuals the incisive nerve is also there as a branch uh, and uh, it also uh, in very few individuals runs across till the other side of the mandible for an example for this video if 
you want to place an implant in the third quadrant in this region so i have placed uh, both the uh, vertical line and the horizontal line in this particular region in the left four first premolar area here we can expect the mental nerve to be present very clearly this is the red line is the 104th slide in slice in the red so this is the mental nerve in the 103rd slice 104 105 so this is the amount of length that we have to for the implant placement and this is the width at the alveolar crest region now if you want to measure this go to the top to tools click on tools distances new distance so come to that particular slice where you want to place the implant left click once pull it pull the line and leave it 2 mm short of the nerve that's your ideal length that you have for an implant placement click it that's 14.4 the length that you have right click to check the width at the alveolar crest left click once pull it across left click again 6.2 so that's the width and that's the height that is available for an implant placement in this site now to go ahead and place the implant go to tools new implant choose the manufacturer i'm just for this example i'm choosing a uh, 3.25 by 11.5 select implant insert implant so basically the implant has come on my cursor i can place it how i like so here you can see you can also see on the panoramic view as well as the sectional view let's take it slightly inside and the implant is placed now to alter the angulation of the implant you can again hold it here and move it as you wish so now you can also measure the distance between the apical most portion of the implant and the mental nerve to see your safe distance so i tried to make a, a very quick video on cbct uh, how to read it the basics uh, there are few other things which i'll point out in maybe another video the video was becoming too long uh, hope you like it Uh, let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe